studio. Not, n not anyone who was not immediately in that scene with each other. So that meant lots and lots of waiting time for the rest of us. Also, Judd Nelson said, uh, said, look, I'm a good actor, I know I'm a good actor, but I really am uncomfortable in this scenario. Uh, I, um, he said, I'm not even sure how to talk to a microphone because I'm so used to talking to people. So for part of it, someone came around uh, and just stood in front of him so he had someone to talk to. It made all the difference. Now, if the person moved over here, he'd be off mic because he'd still be acting with that person. If the person got directly behind the mic, he'd be right on the mic talking to the person. The person moves, the judge's gone. person comes back, judge's back. Thank you. Next question. Anyone come up and see someone? Oh, here we go. Can we please have Grimlock's commentary on what's happening on the screen? <laughs> me can't comment because me looking this way. You're not so smart. Small shield, big mountain. High tech, low tech. Weapon. Oh, prime. Sewing machine. Hey, Tony. Uh, who was your favourite other voice actor that you'd like to work with, you know, during, during G1? Favourite in the room or never yeah, in the room? In the room or? Or your favourite stories or? Say again. Who was your favourite other cast member? That's what I'm looking for. Oh, I have to name one? <laughs> I'm not trying to dodge the question. Everyone for different reasons. Uh, Chris Latta was a genius who was a tortured soul to some degree. He would beat himself up like no one I've ever seen. But it's because he was so passionate about whatever it is he did. Uh, I, I, I suspect he had demons he was battling, but he would throw himself into his work in a way that actually, I mean, absolutely uh, dwarfs anything that I could bring to the party. He really, really, Gave it everything. I mean, I, I feel like I give it everything, but but not to that degree. His was almost to a dangerous degree. It's like if he didn't have that place to put all that energy, he would find something less positive to do with it. I, I mean, I'm just speculating. Uh, Arthur Burghardt, just similar, just fountain of energy. Uh, and, and with the energy came the temperament. I would say, I... I, I I myself as a person am probably closer to uh, Skyfire or Prime. I'm, I'm very careful to consider things. I don't just, I was having this conversation earlier, ready, fire, aim, that kind of philosophy. But those two guys were like, ready, fire, aim. Uh, they would give it all and just go, just go. Uh, Frank, it, beyond belief, uh, I, I have the great pleasure of still working with Frank uh, every week. We're doing new episodes of Garfield. I, I start season two. It's on Boomerang UK. I start season two the day I get back. I fly, get home. So if you see an episode somewhere further down the line uh, that feels particularly jet-lagged, that'll be the episode I did five minutes after I get home. Uh, Frank is a different kind of genius. Frank made a it would make he would always do something ridiculously funny and then say, well, it was this or college. <laughs> Frank
Frank would go to the side of the room, pick up an imaginary phone, and drop coins in. I don't do it, but you get the idea. Then in the, while we're all just like relaxing or, or going through pages and stuff here. Hello? Hello? Oh, I, I can't talk to you now. So he'd have his side of the conversation, the other side of the conversation, so much so that it all became real. He was just at a phone booth in the studio. Uh, and it was like that, and people would do stuff that would just break the ice and break the monotony, not that it was monotony, but make the hours pass. Uh, and I've had the great good fortune of doing on films on camera as well, and when you're on location, actually Wally Burr North turned out to be our location for a period of happily seasons, but when you're on location, you've got to do something to sort of bond with the people you're with, and hopefully somebody's a cut up and, and knows when to just like do something stupid and make everybody laugh and sewing machine and like that. <laughs> so it's it. I mean, it's like that. Different people for different reasons. I said to you, Scatman, last night, just because I, I felt like this guy was from heaven on earth and has now gone back to heaven. Just. A, a, a halo that you could feel when he walked in the room and you just want to like be there and listen to whatever he wants to talk about. Um, Michael Bell has been a great friend over decades. Uh, those of us who were doing G.I. Joe at the same time as we were doing Transformers, you know, double the bond, double the time, double the uh, just, just ability to sort of take the pressure off for each other. Okay? Give me a second. Hi. Um, when did you realize that Transformers was this massive phenomenon, and what was your opinion of it? I guess I thought it had all wandered away from what we did until I think the first BotCon I was invited to was 2001. This is going to sound stupid, but it was at a BotCon, and I thought, but we're you know, generation, we did, I, I didn't even know, know there was G1 or Generation 1. I just thought, gee, this is a really long time from when we did it and it's gone through so many changes and then is anybody even, I, and I went to that one with Michael Bell and uh, we were there and we were treated like demigods. That's, I, I, I mean, I won't say that I haven't had the same experience this weekend and every time I've gone where people care and people remember, not that it's old, it, that's when I became aware that it had its own continuity, that it actually Beastmasters, I'm sure, has its own on its level. That the people who stick with a, a version of this story, these stories, uh, ha have just had this loyalty all along. I was just busy doing all of the other things that I've been doing. So a, a lot of storyline was made uh, known to me then, I think it was 2001. So, until eight years ago, it was sort of something that I had done and sort of put in its place and was proud of, but uh, I thought it had gone away, and I have become more and more and more aware, a lot of it with the help of fans who know the story and, and the sub-stories much better than I ever did at that time. And uh, so it, it rekindled my love for it. I think live action has rekindled a whole new generation's interest in how it all began. So. Uh, I mean, it, it's really an odd continuum of past, present, future. But that, that's an honest answer. It, 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 has, it has gone away from me. Not that I'm not proud of it. I am. I always have been. Any other questions, Greg? So in 2001, I went there thinking, why would they want to see me? And I found out. Yeah. If they got a new director in for the third movie, and they did like the Dino Bots, and they asked, would you come back? <laughs> in a New York minute. <laughs> like I said, if, I mean, if the goal is to, is to see it and do it from the inside out, if you're entrusted with that in a different scenario, in a different, uh, however it comes about, uh, I, would, I would love to jump in and accept that challenge in a really different medium and a different format and find out what happens and, and take it take it through the roof. I do think Dinobots might have been able to end the second movie about 12 minutes sooner. 